Hello and welcome to Issues and Answers. Today we will be discussing a very interesting topic. It's the first time it will be discussed in such a forum and I'm referring her to the Digital Government Services platform. This platform, as you will hear later, is really a deliberate effort by the government of St. Lucia to create an evolution in the way things are done here, introducing technology. And with me is Mr. Marlon Nassis, who is the acting director in the Division of Public Sector Modernization. Next to him is Mr. Mrs. Sheila Imbert, who is the Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Department of the Public Service. And next to her is Mrs. Skeeter Gibbs, who is the Acting Chief Transport Officer. Hello. We want to start off with Mr. Nassis, first of all. Uh, explain to us what really is this new platform? Okay, thank you, Jolita. Um, well, as part of government's digital transformation program, we've embarked on an ICT evolution project, um, which seeks to outline a roadmap for the implementation of government services online. Um, this project will facilitate and accelerate government's e-government agenda, um, and it, it seeks to connect the people where um, we empower citizenry um, to collaborate and to interface and interactive government on their terms, to connect the businesses by enabling information sharing and um, with the private sector and government, and also to connect ministries and agencies to improve on <coughs> interagency collaboration and to allow for data sharing among those um, various agencies. Um, digital transformation, th this digital transformation program is not just about the adoption of new technologies, <coughs> but focuses on the entire spectrum of change management. Um, looking at organizational structures, how they be really redefined and changed to provide better service, to improve the services to the public. Also looking at our governance frameworks, how we um, <coughs> put the right persons in the right places to ensure that you know, we, we, we provide the, 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 the service to the citizen in an ac accurate manner. And also to redefine the processes and very crucially look at how we change the culture within the public sector, within the, um, the government, to be able to provide those services to the public. Now, undoubtedly, this new platform is very expansive. <coughs> and of course, we'll be hearing a lot about it. Um, this this um, discussion is just one of many um, to come and stream. But what, um, in what way will it impact even the business sector, ordinary drivers? What are the overarching um, objectives? And well, the overarching objective of the project is to provide the public service, to provide these public services to the public in a real-time manner <coughs> so that uh, persons can interface with government um, on their terms, uh, you know, within the times that are convenient to them. Also, um, we want to create a, a data-driven culture within the public service that um, persons would be able to um, review what is being done internally and um, be able to assimilate that data for the public when um, they, they require it. Obviously, it would, it would require us implementing new technologies, new um, IT systems um, as we go forward. Also, we want to strengthen government's efficiencies um, to create more economic value um, and cultural value for St. Lucians. And um, this is a very crit critical aspect of it as well. Um, because with this digital government platform, there will be several value-added services that the government can now engage the private sector to provide support um, to this government initiative and, and make more co have more collaboration um, with the private sector as we move along. Um, it also will seek to support the um, supply quality and uptake of the digital government um, process in the sense that um, we'll be looking at business process re-engineering, process optimization, um, the government will also be looking at the <coughs> improvement in its infrastructure um, so that these online services can be um, accessed by the public. So we've um, implemented the CASI project, which seeks to connect all of government buildings, all of government infrastructure, so that we could um, interconnect all of the various agencies, for example. Um, the government has also implemented the GINet project, which is a backbone, which provides a wireless backbone across the island. Um, and high Wi-Fi hotspots in critical areas <coughs> to facilitate access to government services um, using the Wi-Fi technology that is more or less all over the country. And also the digitization 
which would allow us to really have all of these services in electronic form that um, the citizens can interface with government. Okay, I just want to add that, um, of course, government services um, online are not entirely new to St. Lucia, right. but um, I suspect this platform is going to take it several notches higher. Now, the Department of the Public Service, I like to refer to as the nerve center of the public service. Um, Mrs. Imbert, how is that pl platform going to engage all ministries and, and departments, as I understand it transcends the public service? Okay, thank you, Julita. With the Digital Government Services Platform, 153 services will be offered online across eight agencies within the next 18 to 24 months. As a result of that, the Department of Public Sector Modernization, during the initiation phase, met with a number of government agencies to assess the services being offered and to determine which of these services can be offered online. So we have already started the process of engaging all government agencies in the process. They also conducted surveys to get an indication of the responsiveness to this initiative and to ascertain whether persons would like government services to be offered online. At this time, while we focus on the renewal of driver's licenses, this service will impact every single government agency. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but we have already engaged the Department of Justice as it relates to the electronic records of uh, um, vital records, electronic documentation of vital records, and that by mean birth certificates, marriage certificates, and death certificates. And this is all with the in intention of providing that service online where citizens can apply for mm. these vital documents and pay for them online. Okay, so you've touched on the first phase of the project and um, critically to that first phase is the renewal and um, unduplicated driver's licenses and that's where Mrs. Gibbs come in. As um, Acting Chief Transport Officer, what does that entail? Thank you, Julita. When the first phase of the digital government project is launched on January 3rd, 2020, the timeliness and efficiency of processing of driver's licenses will improve significantly. So customers will no longer have the long wait and to take the long lines that they do at the department presently, and the waiting time for collection will also be shortened, hopefully between five to 10 days. I'm sure drivers would be quite happy to hear that, considering what happens there presently. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the first phase in the process would be to, for drivers and customers to register online to be able to access the platform. And once, once they have registered online, they would be able to interface with the digital government system to apply for their duplicate licenses and their renewals. In the case of the duplicate licenses, customers will be required to indicate the reason that they're applying for a duplicate license. If they have lost their driver's license, they would be required to upload a letter from the Justice of, uh, Justice of the Peace so that they could support that application. If the license was stolen, they would be required to upload a police certificate or a police report. And if their license got damaged for any reason, they would be required to upload an image or photocop, an image, sorry, or copy of that um, damage license. Mm -hmm. In the case of renewals, they would enter their current driver's license number into the system, and then the system would, from the back end, upload the existing data and details on that customer so they could proceed with their application. Um, with the digital government system, if the customer is not yet ready to um, process their application, they would be able to save that application and come back to it later and then to submit it. Okay, very interesting. And I suspect we'd want to continue after the break. I've been given a cue that we are due for a break. We will return after the break. Tout moun say counseling, counseling, counseling. Kite mou do bagay chance. Depuis moins fait, PS moun pa jamais comme ça. Mon Glacia, just yesterday you asked me advice about your husband, and we spent over an hour on the cell. Ça c'est counseling? Mon quoi c'est affaire moun? Just think about it, Glacia. 
When you're having difficulty with someone, you ask your friends for advice to help you to deal with your problems. But wouldn't you prefer getting advice from a professional counselor? Huh. I hope you're not one of those who think counseling is for crazy people. Mm. When your situation is bien way, ek mwen besoin professional counseling. Me mani l'argent. Iche a condition doctor's visit. Eh, eh, eh. Don't you know the Ministry of the Public Service has an employee assistance program they call it EAP, which is offering six free counseling sessions for government employees? Iglesia, why don't you take advantage of it? Really? It's free? Lend me your phone, let me call the EAP unit ASAP. Because I want professional, did you say free? Free counseling. Boy, Iglesia, wow, who is the counseling, sir? Call the EAP unit at 468-2269. EAP works. Let it work for you. Welcome back. Just before the break, we were discussing, of course, Ms. Gibbs, the, the whole process uh, of applying for a renewal and duplicate license under the new DigiGov um, services platform. Perhaps you want to continue with that? Yes. So with the new digital government systems system, customers will also be able to edit in their information, whether it be a name change or an address cha a change in their address. However, they would be required to upload the supporting documentation to support that, that change in order for the system to accept it. After they're, they've done, they're done with this process, then they may choose to submit their application, at which point they will be, the system will prompt them to select a mode of payment. Now, under the digital government system, customers could either pay online with their credit card or debit card, or they could select an over-the-counter payment option, in which case the system would generate a bill ID, and the customer would take this information, the bill ID, and would be able to visit the transport department to pay over-the-counter. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, the customer could <coughs> also pay at any government department where the government of St. Lucia receipting system is installed. So with the bill ID, they would be able to pay at any such location. Okay, now I want to go back to Mr. Narciss. Um, we want to talk a little about the digital transformation. Um, <coughs> what exactly does that entail? Okay, well, for the purposes of this project, um, digital transformation in the public sector um, refers to how government harnesses the technology to provide services to the public. Um, and this is very critical uh, because when we, we, we look at all of the journey that government has taken in the past few years, there are several um, system as well as infrastructural initiatives that have taken place. And so we think at this point in time, it is, it is a, a right time for the government to take that next step in its transformation process where it will now be able to provide services to the public um, in real time, online, at the public's convenience and the customer's convenience. That's very critical as well. Um, we want to ensure that um, in engaging government, it is not, it's no longer a hassle-free um, interaction, but um, using technologies, using um, the internet, um, government will be able to then provide um, these opportunities for interaction, also for engagement, for advocacy, for democracy, um, so that we could continue to uh, engage the society and develop our knowledge, um, our knowledge society as we move forward. So maybe I should ask you, um, talking about engagement, how does the department um, intend to engage the citizens? Okay, um, well, as part of this initiative, we had an initiation phase component of the project, which focused, um, well, one of the major components of that would be a um, change management framework for user adoption. And it focuses on two areas, one on the public as well as on the users of the system on the inside who would be actually in the, in the back end um, providing that service. Um, so on the, public, on the public side of things, we've, uh, this panel discussion is actually the, the first leg of several of a series of panel discussions that we want to undertake in order for us to engage the public, to inform the public of what the government is doing, but also through surveys and questionnaires. Um, we did undertake um, a series of surveys at the transport department just to try and get an idea from the public what were their thoughts on the current um, situation where they access government services 
or the, to, to, to renew their driver's license and register their vehicles. Um, and we got some very, very good results from that survey. Obviously, persons are not really happy with the system as it is now, and this is one of the reasons why the government has decided to prioritize this first pro um, initiative as um, through the implementation of the system at the transport department. Um, so we noticed that um, at least 70 percent of the, the respondents to our survey indicated that they would be willing and are excited to um, engage the government online. Now, while, while the, the willingness is there, we know the change is not always easily embraced. Mm -hmm. And there will be fears, there will be doubts, and understandably so. But what, how is the department ensuring that um, the concerns about um, persons, personal information, confidentiality yeah. uh, are taken care of? Actually, that was also one of the questions in our survey. And um, we, persons indicated that they, would be, they are concerned about the ability of government to be able to protect their data, mm -hmm. both from a system side as well as from the legal perspective. Um, we have, so we've attempted to allay the fears of the public in two ways. One, um, we've gone ahead and reviewed a lot of the legislation that is in place currently, um, which speaks to um, e-government, e-commerce, um, and online payments. And um, we've decided to do two main things. One, for the purposes of the transport department, for example, um, there is a transport regulations. Um, there is a, a terminology in the legal fraternity called an omnibus legislation, which we more or less look at covering several areas of, um, of the regulations that govern the transport department. So we're looking to put that in place. Also, um, on the data side for data and privacy protection, um, there is a data and privacy act, which was passed in 2011. However, it has not been effective. So in the discussion with the Attorney General's Chambers, as well as with the consultant to our project, we've agreed that um, the data and privacy protection, some clauses of that protection would, would be effective in time for the, the transport launch. The other one as well is the Computer Misuse um, um, Bill, sorry, Act. It's a, it was also passed in 2011, and this is currently enforced in St. Lucia. So that also provides protection for the public in going online and uh, putting the information online. Um, from a system perspective as well, um, the system would be, um, there will be two-factor two authentication once the national authentication framework is implemented. However, for the purpose of this first launch of the, of the transport, transport system, users will have to register and then they will be given a, well, and they will be able to put in the username and password to protect their profile online. Um, if, I, if, you, if you would allow me, uh, Madam Chair, I just want to also speak to one other aspect of the um, Digital Transformation Initiative, which is um, with Digital Transformation also, also comes Digital Citizenship. And I'd just like to quote um, a young lady, Ms. Karen Mosberger, who defines digital citizenship as those who use the internet regularly and effectively. Mm -hmm. um, I want to go a step further to say that um, for the purposes of our project, we think that um, we want a digital citizen or digital solution to be that person who uses information technology, who uses the internet in a responsible manner to engage society and government. Um, and this is very key. And one of the ways that we're going to go down, we're going to be implementing that um, to engage persons and to allow them to interface with the system is through a project at the Civil Citizens Registry. I think um, Ms. Imbert alluded to it earlier. Um, where every St. Lucian resident would be what is given in multiple ID in which they would be able to interface with the system and interact with the system. So that would be the start of every St. Lucian or resident having a digital um, profile or, or an e-profile on the system to allow them to interface with the government. Okay, so you just made it in time for our second break. We want to thank you for watching Issues and Answers. Please stay tuned. On the other side of the break, we are going to speak to those, uh, the section of society which prefers not to use the, the online system and, of course, the department caters for them as well. The world's climate is changing and that affects all of us. Storms are becoming increasingly intense.
intense. Periods of intense drought and heavy rain stress farm animals and destroy our crops. Higher average ocean temperatures kill our coral reefs and change the migratory patterns of fish. St. Lucia contributes only 0.0015% of global greenhouse gas emissions, but is doing its part, along with countries around the world, to reduce the emissions that are warming our world and changing our climate. These efforts are called mitigation. But decades of emissions have already changed the climate, and the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere today will increase average global temperatures even more. We need to adapt, that is, do everything we can to prepare for and respond to the actual and expected negative effects of climate change, and everyone has a role to play. We need to protect our crops, build homes that withstand storms and keep our drains and waterways free of garbage to help us recover or bounce back from climatic events. Learn more about the Government of St. Lucia's National Adaptation Plan and the steps you can take to protect yourself and your fellow St. Lucians. Welcome back. Thanks for staying tuned. We are discussing the new DGGov uh, platform, phase one of that project, which entails the um, renewal and duplicates of driver's licenses. Mrs. Imbert, uh, what are some of the benefits of that system? With the implementation of the Digital Government Services Platform, we are expected to realize a number of benefits both for the government as well as the citizens. Uh, Mr. Narcis touched um, on some of the benefits of the government as it relates to improving service delivery, business process reengineering, um, a central repository for all electronic records, and he mentioned the initiative at the Department of Justice. But I'd like to focus more on the benefits to the citizens. And uh, we're looking at convenience. You, are, as a citizen, one would be able to apply or renew for a driver's license in the comfort of their home um, through their mobile device. And as such, it means that you could do it anywhere at any point Perhaps in the time. Perhaps drivers on, on the bus stand as well. Yes, you can. Um, so we, we in, in looking at this project, we looked at some of the main benefits to um, the citizens and convenience was one of the major benefits as it relates to, you would be aware that at Transport Division, there are long lines and this in itself adds to transportation cost um, persons have to travel long distances, so we're looking at this being cost effective as well as in increasing efficiency. Mrs. Gibbs mentioned that the system, you enter your information in the system and that the system can provide notifications to you at any point in time. So you could just log on to the system and you would be able to know the status of your application. That in itself is of a, a major benefit in that you would not have to report to the transport division, whether it be in Castries or Viewfort, to collect a driver's license and be told that it is not ready. And we are aware that these are some of the major issues we are faced with right now. What the system also does is that it, it can allow you to change your place of collection. So if you decided at the beginning that your collection would have been in Castries, and for some reason you'd like to change your point of collection, you can change that to Viewfort, again, going back to convenience. So these are some of the major benefits that the platform is supposed to provide to the citizen. Okay, so we're quickly running out of time, but we want to get as much as we can. So Mr. Nassis, um, let's speak to those persons who prefer not to use the online system. Um, how will the ministry cater for those persons? Okay, um, what we've also included in the process flow for the system is for persons who are unbanked or prefer to use, continue to interface with government using cash. Um, you actually have two options. One, you could stay home again in your convenience and apply for that, for that service. Um, Ms. Gibbs also alluded to that. Um, so you would be, the, that individual would then get a service, or bill ID, sorry, which can be emailed to them or sent to them via WhatsApp. And that person could then walk into the transport division to make the payment online, where the system would then register that bill ID that came to them through WhatsApp or email. <coughs> Further, we're also going to be implementing um, service agents um, with the system. So if, again, 
that individual cannot even interface with a, with a computer but needs to come to transport, there will be service agents at the transport division who then allow them or facilitate and assist them in um, applying for the service and accessing the service at uh, the Department of Transport. And roll out time? Just to add to what Mr. Nassis has indicated, in the future, in coming phases of the project, customers will also be have the option of visiting a service agent, sen a service center in their communities in subsequent phases, so they wouldn't even have to leave their community mm -hmm. to access the renewal or duplicate wow. service, so they would be able to do so right in their communities. Wow, and let's talk yes. about it. Rollout phase again, um, rollout date, implementation. Right, so the, the transport services for um, driver's license renewal and duplicate is scheduled for January 3rd, 2020. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to, to the um, service bureaus that um, Ms. Mrs. Gibbs spoke about, we also enge will be engaging some of our other local um, businesses that provide those type of convenient payment conveniences to the public. Um, so, for example, we have had this discussion with ShopPay as well and the possibility of using those, out those ShopPay outlets in the subsequent phases to allow persons to actually come in to make the payment for the service that they have access on the government platform. So, you know, it is going to be a really integrated platform and it, it goes, speaks again to the value-added services that I spoke about where we're going to engage the private sector to be able to, so that they can contribute as well as to allow the public that convenience in accessing the government services. Okay, but just before we end our very interesting discussion, I'm sure uh, the drivers, if not all, drivers, uh, I'm sure they're going to embrace this new system. Mm -hmm. And of course, you spoke to the objectives and the benefits of, the, of that system. But as the, the champion of, of this um, initiative, mm -hmm. of course, your division is spearheading. Yes. Perhaps you have some final words. Um, yes, um, I just wanted to, to take this opportunity to to inform St. Lucians that um, the government of St. Lucia is working very hard at providing, um, uh, getting this digital transformation initiative off the ground. Um, we see the transport division as a major stepping stone and um, uh, the opportunity for us to more or less um, give some more uh, teeth to the project and to, uh, as a concept going forward, we, we're hoping that um, we we'll get the support from the public and the patience of the public as we implement this project over time. Um, there are several agencies that are going to be impacted, apart from the Transport Division. We're looking at the Ministry of Health, um, the Department of, of uh, Sustainable Development. We have Customs. We have So there are several aspects of this project over time and several agencies that would be impacted and um, would be, be able to benefit from the system. So again, the government's intention is not to just focus on the citizen, but also the business environment to catalyze um, trade facilitation as well, which is a major component of the project in the upcoming phases going forward. So um, we look forward to engaging the public further. Um, as I said, we have a, a, a very pointed PR strategy and um, they will be hearing a lot more about the project in the upcoming months. Well said. Anybody else would like to add? Just this was right. <laughs> yes, <laughs> just as a, a final point, I would just like to ask for the public's patience with the transport department as we work to improve our services, improve the timeliness and efficiency of our services. And I just want to assure them that the length of time to get their driver's licenses will reduce significantly by January 2020. Well, this is all our time on Issues and Answers. I want to thank you for, for joining me here today. Of course, there will be other such appearances in this on this medium and in other uh, media. And as we seek to educate you and inform you on the new DigiGov platform. Thanks for watching.